We at Candy Coated Kink want you to have fun and not die. We want all of our kinky friends to be around forever. We're going to show you a little bit about safety with inflatable suits. Inflatable suits are a lot of fun to wear, but there is a lot of inherent risk that we need to discuss. So playing alone is incredibly risky. Uh, that's why we tell people the um, best thing that you could do to stay safe is to actually have somebody there with you to monitor you. Um, of course, some people are still going to do it. Uh, we hope that we paint the picture of how risky it is so that you understand the risks that you're taking. Um, recently, there have been a couple different people in the community that have died. A um, couple from uh, doing breath play and one who was actually in a similar inflatable suit. Thankfully, it was not our one of ours, but it could have been. Um, even with all of the safety measures that we have in place, with the emergency valves and um, the things that we recommend, like using a knife, um, uh, using a wireless doorbell, having a string attached, um, things can still go wrong. And so uh, we want to make sure that people understand what the risks are and that people have died doing this. Um, so that is important, I think, to, to make people understand. It's much like scuba diving. Just like scuba diving, there is a lot of risk. If you understand what the risks are and prepare for them and practice what can go wrong, then you can be a lot safer. And just like scuba diving, wearing an inflatable suit can be incredibly fun and well worth the risk, especially if you understand the risks and practice for emergencies, the risks are lowered. The safest thing that you can do is to have somebody present while you're using the suit and for them to have a sharp pair of scissors nearby just in case they need to get you out quickly. What you should also do is establish some nonverbal signals with your partner to let them know that you're under distress. These could be a movement of an arm, a certain sound. Uh, you can even use devices that make loud noises like a personal alarm or even you can actually buy one of these wireless doorbells for about 20 bucks. And if you put this in a Ziploc bag so that it doesn't get water in it, um, you could have this in the suit with you as long as you have it kind of, you know, in your hand. And if something goes wrong, then you can press the button and get their attention. But just some way to communicate that you're under distress and that they need to get you out. You really should have a way to cut yourself out. Again, this is only going to work if you are conscious. You know, if you're able to realize there's a problem and then you can cut yourself out. Before you get inside the suit, you want to make sure that the breathing tube is firmly attached. There should be one or two safety pins through the tube that hold it in place. You want to try to pull it loose before you get inside. You do not want this coming loose while you're inside because then you will not be able to breathe. And that would be a serious problem. Also, give the mouthpiece a tug. If it's a CPAP mask, you can do the same thing. Make sure that it's on there snug. If you're going to use a string or rope to zip up the zipper when you get into the suit, it is important that you tie a good knot that is not going to come undone. You don't want to get stuck. The easiest one to do is if you pull the rope through, you can tie a simple knot around both pieces. This is a very easy knot and it will not come undone because it will tighten around itself. It's also important to tie some knots at the other end, which will make it easier to feel the rope when your hand is inside. And make sure that you can grip and feel through the suit. 
So you might think it's a little bit funny that I have a rope attached when I've got somebody watching me, but the thing is you don't know if something's gonna happen to the person that's watching you. So this is always a good idea, even if you have supervision. So before you get into the suit and zip it up, you want to check your mouthpiece to make sure that there are no leaks. To do this, you'll breathe in and out through the mouthpiece while blocking temporarily the breathing hole on the outside of the suit, like this. A tiny bit of air may come out around the safety pin or safety pins. This is okay. The idea is to make sure that the majority of the air is coming in and out through the breathing hole. If you have a leak, what can happen is the area inside of the suit can fill up with your exhaled air and you can end up rebreathing a lot of CO2, which can result in death. We don't want that. Locate the emergency valve that is down inside of one of the arms. It should be right about where your fingertips are. You want to keep your fingertips on this at all times in case you need to release the air pressure to get out. There's also a second emergency valve located near your mouth on the inside of the suit. Both of these have no one-way flap, so if you pull the valve, it will gush air into your face. Many people opt for a CPAP mask instead of the snorkel mouthpiece because the CPAP mask stays on your face and it's easy to use. The snorkel mouthpiece, however, has to be bit and you have to keep up with it. But the snorkel mouthpiece is safer because it allows easy access to the emergency release valve. With the CPAP mask, you only have access to the release valve that's by your hand. It's safest to inflate the suit by mouth using the emergency valve that's located near your face. Because if anything goes wrong, you can simply let go and the air that is inside the suit will gush back out into your face and you can breathe that air. So to inflate, you'll take breaths in through the snorkel mouthpiece by having it located just below the, the valve. You don't actually have to put this in your mouth. Just as long as it's located close by, you can take breaths in through your mouth and then exhale into the valve. Then you can block with your tongue and take another breath in through your mouth and nose. You can continue until you inflate the suit and then you'll have to plug it with your mouth and tongue like this. And of course, when you're done to get back out, you can simply bite and pull. You can also release the one that's down by your fingers. So next, I am going to zip up using my rope that is tied to the zipper. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the snorkel mouthpiece in my mouth. Once I zip up, I'm gonna go ahead and check the breathing tube one more time after I inflate. Because once I inflate, if something goes wrong with the breathing tube, I need to know immediately so that I can go ahead and release the air and get out.
Next, you'll have to find your rope. You may have to move your arm and transfer to the other arm temporarily to get the rope situated so that you can pull it. It helps if you grab the top of the track to pull it tight so that it's easier to unzip. The zipper should never be hard to unzip. You don't want to pull and put too much force because you'll just break the zipper. And then you're stuck. If it's ever difficult, then you might need to just change the angle that you're pulling or you might need to pull the track tighter. The zipper should never be difficult to unzip. If it is and you pull hard, you may just break it and then you may just be stuck. So playing solo is definitely one of the riskiest things that you can do in one of these inflatable suits because you're uh, immobilized and if something goes wrong, then you can't necessarily get out quickly. Um, some suits you might actually not be able to get out if something happens, um, if the zipper gets stuck or if uh, something happens to the breathing and you need, you need to be able to get out quickly, uh, that can definitely be a problem. So uh, that's why we say like the most important thing that you can do is have somebody to uh, monitor uh, while you're inside the suit. Um, there are gonna be people that do it without uh, a safety monitor and that is, a, that is very risky. But um, the things that you could um, consider going wrong would be um, you know something happening to your uh, breathing tube, or um, potentially um, something causing you to pass out. There's things that people don't think about, like um, if for some reason it's too tight around your neck, it could potentially cut off your uh, blood supply to your brain and you could uh, go unconscious. Um, or if you have like a medical condition, uh, diabetic or, you know, different things. Uh, some people have seizures, you know, so that's something to consider is like if you have any kind of a medical con condition that could happen while you're inside the suit, you need to consider what's going to happen. Um, but the thing that you really should uh, consider doing if you decide that you want to take the risk and play solo is uh, set up a call with somebody that you can trust. Somebody preferably that can get into your house. Um, give them a key. Give somebody that you trust a key and um, tell them that if you don't hear back from me by a certain time, please come over because I'm doing something risky. If you don't want to tell them that it's kinky, that's fine. But um, at least just convey to them that you're going to be doing something risky and and uh i just want to make sure that i'm safe so if i don't call you by a you know 10 o'clock p.m please come check on me or if you can't get somebody that's local you could at least have somebody call the paramedics um if you don't call by a certain time uh, and you can set up you know maybe uh hey if i don't call you by 10 o'clock call me first you know you can call to do a check but Maybe after they call three times and you don't answer, then it really is time to take action. So really, um, the best thing to do is if you're in the furry community, you can, uh, you know, check around and see if there are some people in like your local community uh, that you could talk to and tell them that, um, you know, you want to do something that is risky, but we you need somebody there that can be a, a safety monitor. Um, the other uh, places that you could look for uh, somebody to be a local um, uh, safety monitor would be on FetLife. Uh, you can create an account on FetLife. That's a uh, website that everybody kind of all over the world uses for um, kink. And uh, you can try to find people that are in your local area. Um, you could try to find a group, you know, see if there's a, a local, uh, you know, 
kink or BDSM meetup group that you could talk to. And, and they're, uh, the groups are all very safety conscious. Um, that is kind of one of the core values of BDSM is trying to keep people safe. So, uh, they will definitely be more than happy to try to help, uh, keep you safe. Another option would be, um, to see if there's a local dungeon that you could go to. Even if you didn't have a partner, if you went to a local dungeon and um, did a solo scene, is basically what it would be referred to as, you would set up your inflatable, you would let the dungeon monitor know, that's the person that's there to um, keep people safe, let them know, you know, I'm gonna get in this inflatable suit, I have a breathing setup, it's a, you know, a, a breathing tube that comes out on the top, and, I can breathe okay, it's not breath play, and I need you to just keep an eye on me. If I'm if I'm in distress, I'm gonna, you know, maybe wave my arms or something, set up some sort of a, a panic signal. And that person is there to keep everybody safe. So as long as you let them know, you know, what you're doing and maybe uh, some sort of a, a emergency signal, then there you go. They could, they could basically be your safety monitor. An another, um, uh, option is to um, check and see if there is an LGBTQ uh, community uh, local that you could talk to. Again, you know, these are people that would be understanding and, and probably willing to help you out. Wearing one of these suits when you are um, drunk or high, you know, on something that's mind altering. Uh, a lot of times people do poppers, for example. Um, it's just very dangerous. Um, so if you're going to play like that, you need to understand what the risks are. And uh, probably the most dangerous thing that can happen is that you could pass out and then you could um, get, build up CO2 or um, you could build up saliva and then aspirate. And uh, there have been people that have died in the community from that sort of thing. So you absolutely need to have somebody there with you. If you're going to play like that, which we do not recommend, it, it's not a great idea, but you're basically just taking the risk even higher and you may not be able to recover from that and you could die. Going in the pool in a pool toy suit is one of the most dangerous things you can do. I've done it. Um, you really need to have a lot of people there to help spot you and keep you safe because when you go in the pool, you um, are pretty much immobile. You can't really do very uh, much. And uh, it can be um, definitely very risky with um, drowning because uh, depending on what shape the suit is, your head could go underwater. Um, depends on where the, you know, the breathing tube comes out. Um, if, it, if it has holes on the front of the face where you breathe or whether it has, you know, like a snorkel, um, that could go underwater. So you really need to have uh, people there that are going to uh, keep an eye on you and have some scissors and uh, some sort of a panic signal. Um, it's probably going to need to be a movement because you might have a mouthful of water. So they need to know that if uh, you know you move a certain way that uh, you need to be cut out. So if you're going to take the risk doing it, just know that like there's a, a possibility that your suit could get cut. Um, that would be on a good day. On a bad day, uh, you could potentially drown. You are way more important than the inflatable suit. It might not seem like it, but if you need to cut yourself out, do it because we will be happy to fix it for free. If you ever have to cut yourself out or somebody has to cut you out because of an emergency, send it to us and we will fix it for free. Your suit's fixable. You are not. Thanks for watching. Be safe and have fun.